I found my original interest in pottery really out of a step of faith. So when I started going to the University of Kansas, I was a transfer student and I also transitioned what I was studying. And when I chose my major, it required a minor. And so honestly, my husband and I started praying and we just asked the Lord, what should I minor in? And I felt like God said to minor in ceramics or specifically visual arts with an emphasis in ceramics so that I could learn to make something from nothing. And it's been just the greatest joy learning how to create from a pile of mud, molding it into something that's usable and beautiful and brings somebody else joy. And so I've just been taking those tools and applying them to my outside world because of how much I've loved doing pottery and how much I've learned and feel challenged by just this avenue of art. Hi, I'm Danielle Philgreen and I am a potter and photographer, but also many other things. I am a part owner to a company called Surveyor Creative that my husband and I own together and we do mostly wedding photo and video. I own a small company called DP Ceramic Co. And that is like my pottery extravaganza. I have one order of a set of four plates that was a gift for a client's birthday. And then the second order that I think I'm gonna throw today is a plate or a planter with a small plate underneath it for catching water. I think I've been gathering my inspiration from colors and textures. And that comes from walking around and seeing something at a glance that is either man-made or it could just be natural. And I'll take a picture of it. One thing that really helps me get in to the flow is listening to music that's really peaceful and or rhythmic. And then the other part that helps me get into a flow is like wearing the clothes I know I throw in. I have these certain pair of shoes and they're really old and I've had them forever and I love wearing them. When I get ready to throw, I don't know why it's so silly, but I just love it. <laughs> the most valuable tools I use, I almost always repeat the tools I use, is a wire cutter, a wooden knife, a ribbed blade, always my water bucket, always my chamois, and then clay. I think those are the main things. And of course my wheel. <laughs> so it's just about five pounds on the dot. That should be pretty good. These are just bat pins. They help hold on this thing, which is a bat. Kina, you want to help? stays. Oh, I haven't thrown this big in a while. Practically, I've become just more and more skillful, so it's become quicker. 
But then mentally, my process has gone from a place of insecurity to a place of confidence. My practical process has changed little in comparison to my mental process. Mm, there's a bubble. Wow, that's just the pits. So I think I have a small bump, but should be okay. Uh-oh, I think I lost it. Maybe. Yep, I did. But that's okay, I think I can save it. Nope, I don't think I can. I pressed too hard. I haven't made a plate in a long time. I think it's just too thin now. Okay, let's make this planter. So discouraging when they don't go as planned and, but it's really, it just feels like the worst because it doesn't happen that many times in a row. But it's the nature of the beast. It's been difficult sometimes to sell things because I have spent, so, especially if it's not a personal order, I have spent so much time making something that I love. I think we have more mugs than I've ever had in my whole life because I get so in love with them and I don't wanna lose them, but we only have so much mug space. I just am gonna get the pot that we threw the other day, which has been drying out for three, three days, maybe two days, can't remember. Um, and the first thing that I always do is I just feel from the top of the wall down to the bottom, and then I mark where it gets thick where it's not even. Okay, so I think the inside of this, these lines is where the foot will go all the way around the bottom of the vessel. There's one technique specifically that I'm fascinated by, and it is faceting. Oh, it's funny. I said fascinated, and it's faceting. Uh, faceting is where you take a wire tool or a knife, or you can use a ton of different things, and you cut off ridges around the piece so it goes from circular to hexagonal or octagonal, depending on how many slices you take. And I love it, it adds texture, and you can push the walls out after that and give it life and breath and, oh, I just love faceting. Placement matters, let's see. And then I'm gonna leave it upside down to dry. Once each piece is stone dry, you can fire it. You just simply and carefully sit them into the kiln and then you just program the kiln and it's modern technology. It runs, it heats up, it cools down 
and then you can take them out once they're below approximately 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You would then go forward by glazing it. What I've heard a really great potter say is that the way you glaze should reflect the way you throw. It shouldn't just be, you know, slopping some glaze onto your piece and then calling it good. It should be just as artistic and just as creative as your throwing process. It should reflect the features that you've added to your piece and really just emphasize the body and surface texture that you've created. Once the glaze is dry, which doesn't take long because the clay body is so absorbent at its bisque state, you can put it into your next firing, which is your glaze firing. And you have a totally finished product that hopefully is really beautiful. Once the glaze process is done, it's the perfect time to either post your pieces online or to deliver the product to the client who had ordered it. And for me, that process is pretty simple. A lot of times I like to put in a personal note with my brand on it, and then each piece I'll put a small tag that has directions, like this piece is 100% microwave safe and can be washed in your dishwasher. I'll wrap it in tissue paper and I'll put it in a gift bag. I'll give them some business cards and that's it. Uh, they come pick it up and it's always a blast. The part that's the most rewarding is seeing somebody else love something that I've made as much as I love it. Like I've made, you know, the whole lot from plates to bowls to urns. It's really special to know that somebody wants my art to hold like a deep value for something they have a specific function for. It just means a lot. It makes you feel so affirmed as an artist. And I just can't believe it. It feels really rewarding, to say the least. <laughs>